Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Bavo. Please remember to turn off your cell phone before Mass begins. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. This Mass is offered for Terry and Paul Richard. Please join in singing our gathering hymn, Sing with all the saints in glory, number 10 in our gold hymnal. and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Nothing it says is. Easter like Beethoven's Ode to Joy. It's a great, great way to start the day. And we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries in the season of joy by coming before the Lord, acknowledging our sins, and asking for his great mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a light shining in the darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray. sins 
O oh God, may your people exult forever in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, <clears throat> and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you have handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this, we are all witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not with them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This passage from the Gospel of Luke doesn't exactly match with the sequence of events that we heard about last week from the Gospel of John. According to John's timeline, Mary Magdalene is the first to encounter the risen Jesus outside the empty tomb early in the morning on the day of his resurrection. Although she immediately runs to tell the eleven that she has seen the Lord, no one else sees Jesus until that evening when he suddenly appears to ten of the apostles. Since Thomas is absent, 
and he refuses to believe that the others have seen the Lord, Jesus returns the following Sunday evening, when all 11, including Thomas, are present. Luke has a somewhat different timeline. Jesus never makes an appearance at the tomb. Instead, several women of Galilee, including Mary Magdalene, encounter two angels there. The angels proclaim that Jesus has risen, but no one can quite believe it yet, since nobody has seen him alive. Then later that same day, Jesus approaches two disciples walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a few miles away. Without revealing his identity, he engages them in conversation about his own passion and death, and he explains all the Old Testament passages that referred to him in any way. When they arrive at their destination around sunset, they sit down for a meal together, and the disciples suddenly recognize Jesus as he breaks the bread. They immediately run back to Jerusalem to tell the eleven, and lo and behold, Jesus appears to all of them. And that brings us to the passage that we heard today. Jesus convinces the eleven that he has come back from the dead, and then he opens their minds to understand the scriptures, just as he had done for those two other disciples on the road to Emmaus. Now, one common thread in all of the post-resurrection accounts is that those who saw Jesus on that first Easter day had a hard time recognizing him at first, and then struggled to believe their own eyes once they did recognize him. Even displaying the wounds in his hands and feet and side weren't necessarily proof enough. Maybe this was merely the ghost of Jesus, not the risen Jesus. I guess we shouldn't be surprised by any of this, considering the trauma that all of those disciples had suffered over the past few days. They had seen their dear friend arrested, tortured, paraded through the streets, and crucified. Then his dead body was hastily taken down from the cross and placed in a tomb. Now, on the third day, he suddenly appears before them, alive and well, but physically unrecognizable. Oh, and he can now pass through locked doors also. Let's not forget that little detail. Frankly, if I had been there, I'm not sure that seeing Jesus eat a piece of cooked fish would have been enough to convince me. And there's something else about these appearance stories that I also find curious. At no time does Jesus ever explain what has happened to him. When something amazing happens to us, we like to tell people all about it often in such excruciating detail that they ask us to cut to the chase and give them the short version instead. But Jesus never describes what it was like to rise from the dead. Instead, he focuses exclusively on why he had to suffer and die. Jesus reminds his disciples that he spoke about these things when he was still with them, but they failed to understand. Now, according to Luke, Jesus opens their minds to understand the scriptures, as he had done hours earlier for those two other disciples on the road to Emmaus. Jesus then concludes by this lesson by saying, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Note, the main message that Jesus commands and commissions his apostles to preach to the nations is not about his resurrection from the dead, but about repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That was the reason why he suffered, died, and rose again. Everything that happened to him was the, for the forgiveness of our sins. Hence, the good news of Jesus Christ is as much about us as it is about him. He gave his life for us so that when we turn back to God and ask for forgiveness, we might receive it. And we can see in the Acts of the Apostles how those witnesses follow Jesus' instructions. After proclaiming to the crowd that God has raised up and glorified the Holy and Righteous One whom they had put to death, 
Peter immediately transitions into the message of repentance and forgiveness. He explains that all of these tragic events transpired in fulfillment of prophecy so that our sins could be forgiven. He pleads with them, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. That is a powerful and uplifting message. Yet there is a still deeper level to the Christian proclamation, which speaks to the new covenant in the blood of Christ. The law of Moses already provided rituals for the expiation of sins. Jewish people could go to the temple at any time to offer sacrifices for their sins. And on the annual feast of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the high priest would celebrate a more elaborate ritual to seek forgiveness for the whole nation of Israel. So repentance and forgiveness were already an integral part of the first covenant between God and his chosen people. But Christ's death on the cross has fundamentally altered the relationship between God and all of humanity. As St. John explains in his first letter, Jesus' expiation not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. In other words, the effect of Christ's sacrifice extends beyond the forgiveness of our individual sins, or even the sins of just one nation or people. His sacrifice has ended the reign of sin and death in the world and opened the way to salvation for all who believe in him. So when we proclaim the death and resurrection of Christ as a fact of history, we are also proclaiming the future promise of resurrection from the dead for all who believe in Christ and turn to him for mercy. That means that the Easter message of the church is not merely Christ is risen, alleluia. That's certainly true. But our proclamation is far greater. We also will rise with Christ. He is our hope and our salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Together with all the faithful of the church, let us profess what we believe. I believe, I believe in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and, and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the power of the risen Christ, let us bring our needs to God this day. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our church, May the Lord guide them as they serve the physical and spiritual needs of the people entrusted to their care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, 
May the Lord grant them courage and fortitude to defend the dignity of all persons, especially those on the margins of society, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling with their faith, may they be enlightened by the scripture, scriptures and strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose lives have been torn apart by war or civil unrest, especially the children, may God have mercy on them and protect them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the love of God be perfected in us, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our parishioners who are sick or homebound, especially those on the prayer line, may God give them comfort and healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our faithful departed, especially Terry and Paul Richard, may they rejoice forever with the risen Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us offer our own personal intentions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of hope, Hear the prayers which we offer up to you and answer them according to your wisdom and mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing the preparation of gifts hymn, Alleluia, number one, number 199. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name. 
for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O Lord, receive these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Bebo, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Our school, Mishawaka Catholic School, is holding a spring flower fundraiser. And we have order forms available at all the doors, although they might be running out. Uh, you can also get the order form off our webpage or the school webpage if we run out of the flyers here in church. But uh, I think we still have a few at the exit. Uh, the orders must be submitted before April 26th, so you have a couple of weeks. And just uh, a reminder that the uh, Ladies of Wings will be collecting children's books that all through the month for the Women's Care Center. Uh, every child who comes in with their mother gets to take home a free book. And so we need new or gently used children's books for ages zero through five years old. And uh, there's a plastic container back there in the vestibule on the right side uh, where you can drop your books or you can bring them to the office during the week. And again, that's all through the month of April. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please join in singing our sending forth hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 53 in our gold hymnal.
imagine to be back so I can start to actually